So in today's video, we are going to be showing you this beautiful tree right here. And this is a fair warning about growing Moringa trees. Hey, family and friends. And if you're just visiting the channel, welcome. This is Aaron with AMZ Backyard Orchard and Vineyard. And like I said, this beautiful tree is the Moringa tree. It is on its sixth year in the ground. We planted it by seed, which is super common because they grow so fast. They grow so fast. And be cautious if you're gonna buy a Moringa tree or if you're gonna grow it by seed, they grow fast, okay? This is six years old and we prune the heck out of this tree. We prune it down. In fact, we have a playlist just on this tree alone showing you how we prune this tree and it just looks terrible when we prune it. We prune it way down here and look at these branches. Look at these branches. We prune this thing in March and look at these branches. They're eight feet long. They're huge. And this is June. This is June 2023. And this tree is in full production right now. We do consume this tree a lot. In fact, I use this in salads all the time. And we eat the leafy greens fresh right off the tree. And it's delicious. A lot of people call this the horseradish tree. It's got a lot of nicknames. This tree. It's called the Moringa. But it's got a lot of nicknames. Uh, one of the nicknames is horseradish because certain times of the year, if they're not watered properly, all the flavor gets concentrated in the leaves. And it gets a little spicy. It gets a little horseradishy. But if you water it properly and you keep it regularly maintained, it's actually really good. I kind of compare it to arugula, personally. I like arugula. We have arugula in our salads. Those box salads that have arugula in them. This tastes just pretty similar to that. So it's a really good leafy green to, to eat. It's full of vitamins, minerals, calcium. There's even protein in this thing. It's a superfood. It's qualified as a superfood because it contains so many nutrients. A lot of other countries grow these and farm. They farm these trees for their high nutrient content in areas where they can't get the nutrition and medicine. They just eat this tree and they're healthy. It fixes blood pressure. I've, I've read stories and I've heard stories of people consuming this regularly and they're diabetic and it brings their A1C down just by adding this to their diet, just adding leafy greens like the Moringa to their diet. It's a really good tree if you plan on eating it. It's a good shade tree. It looks nice. I think it's a beautiful tree if you prune it right. But look how big it gets. This thing's huge and it grows fast. So if you're going to grow a Moringa tree, you can grow them in pots, but keep them pruned. I would highly recommend anything smaller than a 24 inch pot. 24 inches is a really big pot if you're going to be planting these things in a pot. That thing's going to get full size on you in just a couple of years. Maybe three years full size just like this. And we keep this thing maintained. In fact, we, we constantly prune it. In fact, let me show you where I pruned it just the other day, in fact. I pruned it down here. Right there. Because we want to keep the canopy low. Because I can't reach up there. I can't reach 20 feet up in the air. I'm only six foot tall and I've only got an eight foot reach. So keep these things pruned, right? You want to be able to consume this thing. Yeah, this is a fruit tree channel, blackberry channel, grapevine channel, but we also grow this. It produces food for us and it feeds our family. It feeds us, it feeds us all year long. This is an obnoxious amount of Moringa. You do not need more than one tree unless you would just enjoy the beauty of them you physically cannot eat this much moringa in one year i dare you <laughs> and see what happens on the output of eating so much moringa when i when i do eat this tree it's usually when i do eat the leaves i should say i don't need to actually eat the tree the whole tree is the whole tree is edible the flowers they make teas out of in fact where's the flowers at there's flowers in here there's the flowers right there. Those are the flowers. 
it flowers twice a year this is the summer bloom and then during the December there's another bloom but this summertime blue is the one this summertime bloom is the one that's going to be producing those bean pods the drumsticks it's also called the drumstick tree because it grows bean pods that you want to get when they're nice and skinny I don't have any examples right now make sure you subscribe to this channel and I'll show you the drumsticks as soon as those things form and they get really long they get 16 18 20 inches long but you got to get them when they're thin I've had some questions on when to eat the drumsticks from this tree and you got to get them right away as soon as they start forming you only have you really have only have a couple week span to eat those drumsticks before they start getting those big beans the big seeds and then they start hardening up they get real stringy so you gotta you, you gotta get them when they're really thin and really long and they actually taste like asparagus you can just eat them straight from the tree the drumsticks when they're fresh when they're really small that's the time to eat them so consuming this tree is one of our ultimate goals like i said we keep this thing pruned and once it's established like this we really don't water it in fact it's kind of like the desert plants here in arizona we're in growing zone 9b where it's a really hot climate a lot of our desert plants the more you water them the faster they grow so we don't water this thing it is fully established it's got its tap root in there it is done there's no care needed for this it is on its own this tree has been around for ages and it's adapted to hot climates desert climates like we are here in arizona you can grow them anywhere and we're like i said we're in 9b they're pretty they're pretty frost resistant during the winter time and we don't prune it we don't prune this thing until early early spring just before it starts waking up that way we keep the canopy up here and that's what's going to keep the trunk from freezing we've had questions on that too is how frost tolerant are they they're pretty frost tolerant when they're this big because we keep that canopy and that acts like a nice big warm umbrella during the winter season our winter season here in the deserts is really only like December and January. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much the coldest part of the year for us. So as soon as we can get through that and then we start pruning this thing, usually around March, early April, that's how we prune it. So we really don't water it much. It does get some irrigation from our fig tree and the other little bushes and shrubs around it. Just taps into those those moist areas but that's it that's really all the care that we give this tree we don't fertilize it anymore we did get we get, did give it initial mulch in fact you can see some of the bean pods down in there we use all the sticks and we just mulch this tree we use its own tree branches and leaves when we prune it and we just put them right back into the soil and it just kind of builds the soil around it you really don't want to fertilize this thing too much around the trunk because it'll rot out and you don't want to do that so don't water these things when they're fully established pretty much when you want to water these trees if you're going to plant them in the ground give them the first couple of years water them regularly every other day during the growing season especially when it's hot and that's just to establish the the tap root and that's really about it really easy tree to grow i think it looks beautiful it's big it's dense it's leafy so if you have any questions, comments, concerns, make sure you leave them down in the comments section below. We do love hearing from our viewers. And if you're just visiting the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing. We do talk about this tree a lot. We have a lot of information on this tree that we are more than happy to share. So from my family to yours, thanks for watching.